So just a quick video, let's go ahead and walk through how to create the orthographic views. You want to make sure that your model is oriented so that the front and the top and the right hand views are kind of lining up. So explore 3D rotate if that's not in there correctly, or you can change where your coordinate system is. So the first thing, open up a layout that has your title block set up for yourself. And then go ahead and use view base command. And I'm using model space, so hit enter, and that will pull up what's in those chevron brackets. And we'll kind of go ahead and start with the front view. And I'm going to place that in the lower left-hand corner. So click enter. And then don't hit enter again until after all of these different views are placed on there. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these views in and then hit enter after all of them are placed. So there's our orthographic views using view base. There's also view section. I'm going to go ahead and delete this side view and replace it with view section. For that one, what we do is select the parent view, click, and I'm going to zoom in and if you kind of hover over it, it'll give you the center marks. I have my snaps turned on. So I'll click kind of outside of this object and click again, and then hit enter. And it's going to create kind of this internal view with a hatching line showing what's, what's happening inside of it. Where, so that's a, a sectional view. And then you can do an auxiliary view pulling it off of if you have an inclined surface. So sometimes when they make this label, it's a little bit um, clunky, so the text is big. Turn off your snaps, it's not letting you move it around easily. And if you want to change the font size, you can right click and go to Quick Properties. So this will pull up a new little menu and maybe instead of 24, I should make it only 18, right? So that will kind of make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so there's view base, view section. The next things to do are to go over to the annotate and we can start adding a few dimensions to this thing. So I've already set up a different, I'm gonna go to Jim style and this is where you can type the the precision the size of everything so you'll see i have kind of the generic standard i have another standard where i have the font size a little bit smaller i have one for the hole tolerance and the shaft tolerance so you can either come in here and modify what exists or I'll go ahead and create a new dimension style that I can use in the future. So I'm gonna just call this new, new standard and we'll just um, continue and it'll show up under my dimension styles. And this is something that you can save as part of your template in the future too. So you don't have to, um, reset all of your font sizes and stuff. Okay, so here is our new standard and we can come in here, set our text size, our units. If you want to use fractions, we were using inches, so I thought that might go well. It will give you kind of a preview for how it will add those numbers. This is where you can add tolerances. So I'm going to do just a standard with fractions instead of decimal places for this. You can see that there's different types of, so here's for decimals, and then you would set the number of zeros. Don't use extra significant figures if that's not really meaningful information. For engineering, it will put inches and feet marks on there. 
or architect is more of the fraction again, and it will put in inches. Maybe I should change it. Let's try out the architectural. Okay, for the text, I'd like to make the text height the same size as the arrow, and sometimes it it gives the default as kind of a large size. So I'll make those a little bit smaller there and put the fit, maybe try and get, press the arrows if they're not gonna fit, might be a good idea. So I'll say, okay, and then hit the new standard, set current. And as I add dimensions, it'll use that dimension style for whatever I have set current. So I'll go ahead and add, there's aligned, an angular, or just a plain old linear. So dim lin is for dim linear. And I'll turn on my object snap settings. I like to not go to all the way to the edge, but kind of grab things from the middle of the line to be sure that I'm getting the line on there. Let's go ahead and see if we can give ourselves some more room. So you can change the scale through um, quick properties. It has some kind of standard. The other way is to just type scale, select what do you want to change, and then pick a base point, and you can sort of stretch it into a That'll not be a, you know, a perfect one-to-one -one or one-to-two, but you can, sometimes it's better to just eyeball it. Okay, let's do another dim linear. And again, I'm going to grab this kind of in the middle of the lines here to be sure I'm not getting a corner wrong. And this is set to our architecture units. So right from the middle to the middle. These little guys, you can ignore. Right click, you can try and reassociate. If it's connected to an extension line instead of the part line, you'll get those, but don't worry too much about them. It won't print. And after it, you can kind of tug it around with a little blue Sometimes it's easier just to, to redraw it if those guys give you trouble. For features like these circles, there's six of them. You only need to dimension that once. And if it's a full circle, use a diameter. If it's just part of an arc, you can use a radius. So I'll go ahead and say dim diameter. And that will put in the diameter symbol on here. And then if I double click on it, it will open up the text editor. Sometimes it's hard to kind of see where your cursor is on this, but if you arrow over, you can then start typing and add something like this happens in six different places. So yeah, type on it, escape out, and you can kind of drag this around for whatever location might be the, the best way. Make sure you have, so if I look at how far away from the edge this is, that might be an important dimension to add. Let's go ahead and go over to our tables and add some dimensional tolerance notes. So for a hinge, we'd want something that is able to slide around. Let's go ahead and choose a RC class fit. And we have thousandth of an inch for a 0.25 quarter inch diameter shaft. And let's go ahead and set up tolerance from our tolerance tables that should give us these different dimensional limits on here. So geometric versus dimensional tolerance, the dimensional one you can set under dim style. And for this one, I've already set this up as new, but you can click new, name it tolerance. 
When it pulls up the menu, you're going to choose limits. And then these two limit sizes, so this is the one for the shaft that goes from 0 to 0 0.0006. Remember, those are thousandth of an inch on the table. So I'll say OK. And then I'll go ahead and set to my current tolerance, close. And when I mention a diameter now, so this is for the whole piece of this, you can see it's going to give me my two limit values. And I can go ahead and set a new style. So for the shaft, I'm going to modify it. And you can see the, the shaft has slightly different limits. And these are numbers off of that table. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Set current. And now we can mention the shaft with dim diameter again. And you can see those limits. So if you get these on there, this should match what is on your table. So I'm adding that 6,000 and zero for, for the hole. And then on the shaft side, I've got my 2495 and 2491 on there. So that's the dimensional tolerances. For the geometric tolerance, it's a different set of tools. So we're going to pull up Q leader, enter, and go into settings, settings for Q leader. There's a couple of different things. So we can go ahead and set this to tolerance, not just text, but tolerance. And it's also possible to go and change the type of arrow on here. So I'm going to choose a, the first arrow and tolerance and hit OK. And just clicking once, so not a distance. I'm going to maybe say, I would like this surface to be flat. So click, click, and you don't have to fill in all of these boxes, but here's all the symbols for the different geometries. So for instance, you have the position, if you want something centered or concentric, there's symmetrical or parallel. So why don't we go ahead and choose flat? I would like this piece to be flat within, I don't know, point oh oh. One five inches. And I'm not going to fill anything else in for this one. If you're comparing two surfaces, you could say surface A and surface B need to be 90 degrees to one another, or surface A and surface D need to be parallel or something. But whatever you don't fill in, it will ignore and it won't draw a box for those. But here we've got our geometry symbol and the, the Q leader geometry text. So that has sectional view, geometric tolerance, dimensional tolerance, dimensions, it has our view base, our orthographic views, title block, and those are the basics for, for putting together something you could hand your local machinist.